of Jesus, born under a star. The mighty emperor of Rome had given a new order, an order which would touch the lives of all the people of the world, even the people of the small Galilean town of Nazareth. Please, uh, words are hard for some of us. Would you, would you read it for us? All right, old man, but I don't think you'll like what it says. By order of His Excellency, the Emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus, all people are to return to the city of their birth to be counted for taxation. The city of our birth? Oh, but I'm too old for such a trip. I can't travel all the way to Hebrew and Shirley. No one is too old or too young to obey the orders of Caesar, old man. If Hebron is the city of your birth, then you'll soon be leaving for Hebron. Caesar has given an order, and your own King Herod will see that each of you carries it out. Mary! Mary! Joseph! What's wrong? A ruling from Caesar, Mary. We must all return to the city of our birth to be counted. Return to Bethlehem now? I'm sorry, Mary. I know it's a long trip for you to take, and with the baby due to come so soon, but there's nothing we can do about it. Joseph, it will be all right. The Lord will take care of us. Well, would he have given us the promise of this child if the child were never to be born? No, no, he wouldn't, but... And remember, the scriptures say the Savior will be born in the city of David, Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph wasted no time. They started out on a long journey to Bethlehem. Mary's heart was peaceful. She thought back to the day many months ago when the angel of the Lord appeared before her. She thought again of the startling news he brought her, that God had chosen her to be the mother of the Christ child. Mary, come back from your dream world. Look ahead. Bethlehem. And now, to find a place to stay. The small Judean city was crowded that night with others who had come to register their names for Caesar's census. Joseph and Mary wandered through the streets. They went from one inn to another looking for some place, any place, to stay for the night. It looked hopeless as they entered the last inn. No, 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 I have nothing. We're all filled up. But my wife... She'll be having a baby soon. I'm sorry, but that still doesn't give me any extra room. I have no place to put you. Please, Father, I can help these people. Yeah, you? What, what can you do for them, son? Well, I, I can fix up the stable for them. They can stay out there. Joseph. Stable? Oh, well, I hadn't thought of that. Well, what do you say to my boy's offer? Are you willing to spend the night with the animals? Yes. We'll gladly stay with the animals. And we thank you, young man. We thank you. It wasn't long before Joseph and Mary were settled among the animals. Joseph's thoughts wandered to the future. He wondered what God had in mind for them. That's strange. I've never seen such a bright star before. It's almost as if it's shining right down on us, Mary. Come, look at it. Mary? The baby. The hills surrounding Bethlehem were good for grazing sheep. Young Jared was glad to be away from the crowded little town for even one night. He liked it in the quiet hills with his uncle and his uncle's sheep. Come, Jared, it's time to give the sheep a drink. May I give the lambs water from my cup, Uncle Ross? All right. Then we'll take them over the ridge there and let them sleep for the night with the other sheep. Who do those sheep belong to? Oh, several shepherds, Jared. We stay together so that it's easier to protect our sheep. These hills can be a dangerous place at night. (coughs) 
There. Do you hear that? Are you? Yes. Well, you'll have to be on guard tonight. They're as bad as robbers, the way they kill and steal our sheep. Well, come along now. It's getting dark. <laughs> um, uh, who's to stand the first watch tonight, Raj? Uh, how about the youngster? Well, Jared, do you think you could stay awake while the rest of us sleep a while? Oh, yes, Uncle Rush. I can do it. Now, it's an important job. You must watch and listen closely so no wolves sneak up on us. We can already hear them in the distance. close. I'm sorry, Uncle Rush. Hey, it's all right, son. I'll stay awake with you now. We'll keep watch together. It's a clear night. The stars have never seemed so bright. Especially that one. The star to the east, Uncle Rush. It's brighter than all the rest. What was that? I, I don't know, Jarrett. Do not be afraid. Uncle Rush, what's happening? I, I think it's an angel, Jarrett. An angel from heaven. I am Gabriel, and I bring you news of great joy for all the world. Today, in the city of Bethlehem, a savior is born. Uncle Rush, the savior? You will find the baby wrapped only in blankets, and lying in a manger. They've disappeared. Rosh, what are you doing? Putting out the campfire, Ehi. If the Messiah has been born tonight, we must find him and worship him. King Herod was worried. News of the birth of a baby had reached Jerusalem. Even the palace servants were whispering among themselves. Finally, Herod called his trusted servant, Ramah. I've had enough of this whispering, Ramah. Why should the birth of a baby cause such excitement? This isn't an ordinary baby, sire. Some people believe their king has been born. Their king? I am their king. Yes, sire. But the scriptures say that a messiah will be born, a king of the Jews. Some of the people think this king has been born. Ridiculous. Some troublemaker off the street has started a whole ridiculous story. I would agree, your majesty. Only... Only? Only what? It doesn't seem to be only the people of Jerusalem who have heard the story. There are three strangers from the east. What about them? They are looking for the king of the Jews. They say they saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Bring them to me at once. I'll find out all they know about this king of the Jews. Ramah searched throughout Jerusalem until he found the three strangers. They followed him to the palace of the king. Gentlemen, please come forward and present yourselves. Thank you, your majesty. Uh, I am Caspar. I am Melchior. And I am Balthazar. In our own country, we are known as wise men or, or astronomers. We, we study the stars. A very honored profession. I have men such as you in my own court. You do? Oh, then perhaps your wise men have seen his star. Oh, the star in the east. 
Yes, of course. Would you tell me more about this star? We first saw it some time ago, mm. uh, the night we learned of the king's birth. And we believe it will lead us to the place where he was born. Very interesting. Well, my good men, I won't keep you any longer, but before you go, may I ask a great favor of oh, you? Yes, yes, yes of, course, of course. After you have found the child, will you come back to Jerusalem and bring the news to me? I, I'd like to know exactly where he is myself. After all, if he is to be king of the Jews, surely I must worship him too. The three wise men continued on their journey following the brilliant star. It led them to Bethlehem, and there they found the child. We're looking for the Christ child. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. We, we brought him gifts, gold, because he is a king. Frankincense, because he is God. Myrrh, because he will die for us. Later, as the wise men slept, Casper was awakened by a dream. Melchior, Belthazar, wake up, wake up. We must leave right away. What is it, Casper? I, I just had a dream. It, it was like a warning to a us. A warning? Yes. Yes, it warned us not to return to King Herod. But, Caspar, he asked us to come. I know he did. But we can't ignore this warning. I... I feel sure it was from God. What shall we do? We must return home at once, but not by way of Jerusalem. We'll take another road. King Herod sent his servant Ramah to look for the wise men who were to have brought him news of the baby Jesus. Ramah, at last. I came as quickly as I could, Your Majesty. I searched throughout Bethlehem. Well, where are the wise men? Sire, I did my best, but I had no luck at all. They've disappeared. Disappeared? All right. All right. I don't need them anyway. Tell me about the baby. No one seemed to know where he could be found. What? I looked everywhere. He shall not escape. Do you hear me? Yes, sire, but... Call the captain of the guard. Tell him to choose his best men. I want them to ride to Bethlehem tonight. But, sire, surely if I couldn't find the child... We they... won't bother looking for him anymore, Rayma. There's one way to settle the problem once and for all. I want every baby boy in Bethlehem killed. <gasps> Sire, if, if you'll only be patient. Patient? I don't need to be patient. You heard my orders, Rayma. Every baby boy, two years and under. He couldn't possibly be any older than that. The king of the Jews. <laughs> All the world will know I am king of the Jews. Mary, wake up. Wake up. No, sir. What is it? I... I just saw an angel, Mary. An angel? We must leave for Egypt. Right away. But, Joseph, why? The angel warned me Herod wants to destroy Jesus. No. Come, Mary. We have got to get Jesus as far away from here as we can. There's no time to waste. While Herod's soldiers swooped down on Bethlehem, killing all the baby boys, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were making their way toward Egypt. They stayed in Egypt for several years, until once again an angel appeared before Joseph and told him it was safe to return to Israel. They stopped at the city of Hebron on their way back home. Mary, look! Isn't that Amos from Bethlehem? It is. Still traveling around selling his pottery. Amos! Amos, over here. Joseph, Mary. And here's the child. What has it been, Joseph? Two, three years? Three years, Amos. But we're back in Israel to stay. Good. We 
heard that Herod is dead, that it's safe to return home. Oh, well, I don't know if it's safe to return to every part of Israel. But Amos, why not? Herod's son, Archelaus, rules over Judea now, and he's as bad as his father before him. Do you think he'll be as eager to find Jesus as his father was? There's no way of knowing, Joseph. Well, then, we'll just have to keep moving. How about Galilee or Perea? Herod's oldest son, Antipas, rules them, and I've heard nothing bad about him. Joseph! Galilee, that means we'd be safe in Nazareth. Well, Mary, it looks as if we'll really be returning home. All the way to Nazareth. Once again, Joseph and Mary and Jesus set out on another journey. But now they would settle down. Nazareth would be their home. And Jesus would grow from boyhood into manhood. And be known as the Nazarene. Help us. Please, sir, can you help us? Huh? Fish? You want fish? No, no fish. We're looking for our son. He's disappeared. He's only 12, and he's never been to the city before. Here for the Passover celebration, eh? Yes, from Nazareth. But please... Passover ended three days ago. You boy been missing all this time? Yes, we had started home. We were on the road one day before we discovered he was missing. We thought he was playing with the other children in our caravan, but no one's seen him since we left Jerusalem. Have you seen him? Well, I see most everybody comes through the marketplace. So, so one young lad go off with the camel caravan yesterday, heading for Syria. Joseph! Do you remember what he looked like? No, he was just a young lad, a stranger. Then there's uh, another one in the city that I've been hearing about, but no, no, it couldn't be. Tell us, please. Well, he's been staying in the temple a couple of days now, asking more questions than the priests can answer. Only a youngster. It's Jesus, I know it. Come on, Mary. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Joseph, listen. He's in there. Jesus, you're safe. We were so worried. I'm sorry you worried, but you know I wanted to be in my father's house, learning all I can about him. Please, you must forgive our son. He didn't mean to be a bother. So there's no need to apologize. We were all amazed. We've never seen such knowledge before. How can such a young boy have so great an understanding? Jesus, what are you doing? Why are you closing your shop? I'm leaving Nazareth, Aaron. Leaving? Where will you go? Well, right now I'm going down to the Jordan Valley. My cousin John is there, preaching. I want to find him. John? You haven't seen him since you were children. You'd leave your home and your shop to go to him? His preaching is important. He's baptizing all those who want to be forgiven for their sins. Yes, but how does I that... want to be a part of what he's doing. Here now, Aaron. All the tools a carpenter could use. Will you see that whoever takes my place gets them? Oh, but Jesus... Well, they've served me well, but I won't need them anymore. John! Who calls me? I do. I've been listening to you preach, watching you baptize. You're a stranger in Bethabara. Yes. I've come from Nazareth to find you. Is it Jesus? Yes, John. Oh, my Lord. Andrew, Jotham, everyone. This is the Lamb of God. The one God has chosen to take away the sins of all men. Oh, God. I'm glad I found you. I want you to baptize me, John. Baptize you? You don't need to be baptized. You've done no wrong. You should baptize me. You've baptized all these others. Whatever is right for other men is right for me, too. Oh, yes, but Lord, this... Let me do God's will. I... All right. Please, come down into the water with me. For God, I baptize you. This is my beloved son. He has pleased me very much. 
Andrew. Andrew, did you hear that? What was it? Thunder? I... I believe it was the voice of God. Peter? Peter! Here, Andrew. You're just in time. Tell Macdi that we can get goat's milk cheaper than this anywhere in the city. No, no, no. Three denarii. You can't get... We found him, Peter. We found him. Macdi? You found Macdi? I didn't even know he was lost. Why, we've been... The Messiah, Peter. The Messiah. Three denarii. You pay now or I sell to someone else. You pay now. Wait, Macdi. We must see if my brother has gone mad. It's true, Peter. We found the Messiah. But how do you know? Have you seen him? Talked to him? Yes. Yes. He came to the Jordan River this morning when John was preaching. No more talk. You're a hard one to deal with, Simon Peter. You talk of the Messiah while my milk gets warm and spoiled. But, Macdi, the Messiah has come. Ha! Ah! No! No! You don't pay me three denarii. You leave my stand. Here you are, Macdi. Here are four denarii for your warm goat's milk. And here's even more for your best cheese. Tonight we'll eat well to celebrate the coming of the Messiah. Come, Andrew. Take me to him right away. Go away with your wild stories, Peter. I know you too well. But, Nathaniel, we've all seen him and talked to him. Now he's invited all of us to his home in Nazareth. Nazareth? You want me to go to Nazareth? Well, you know what I think of that place. No good thing ever came from Nazareth. I won't argue with you. Just go with us to his home. You'll see for yourself. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll go. But I'm afraid you'll all see how mistaken you are about your Messiah before we return from our trip to Nazareth. Peter, wake up. This is no time to be sleeping. We're going to a wedding today. A wedding? Jesus is a guest. He says we'll all be welcome. Well, then I'd better hurry. Where are the others? They went to the marketplace. Oh, you didn't want to go? No. I wanted to talk more with Jesus. Peter, I'm sorry for the way I acted the other day. The things I said... Nathaniel, you don't need to apologize. I knew you'd believe, too, once you met him. Now come, we've got a wedding to attend. Jesus, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Judah. Your mother is already here, helping serve the dinner. Please, help yourself now. Thank Jesus. you, thank you, thank you so I'm much. so glad you got here. Mother, what's wrong? Well, someone must have made a mistake when they ordered the wine. It's all gone and guests are still arriving. Mother, do you know what would happen if I take care of this for you? Everyone will see the power of God that is with me. Jesus? It's all right. I will take care of it. Naomi, do whatever Jesus asks. Naomi, have some of the other servants take six water jars out to the well and fill them with water. There, my three are filled. Uh, I'm ready. Why are you men bothering with water now? Don't you know we've run out of wine? Yes, sir, but we were told to fill these water. Water won't satisfy guests who are wishing for wine. You've got to... I asked them to do it, Judah. Pour some. Taste it. All right. But I still... Mm. Wine. It's delicious wine. I don't understand. Nathaniel, did you see that? Jesus turned water into wine. I had no idea he could do such things. This is only the beginning, Nathaniel. You'll see many, many more signs of God's love for his people. Have you heard? Jesus is back. It's about time he got around to doing something for his own people. But I heard him say he came home to preach, not to perform miracles. What? We can hear preaching anytime. We want some of those miracles he's been performing everywhere else. Am I too late? 
Has Jesus already started preaching? Mm-hmm. Quite a while ago, Levi. He read from the prophet Isaiah, and he said that God sent him to preach to the poor. What about the miracles? Hasn't he said anything about miracles? He hasn't mentioned them. The people are getting restless, uneasy. Anyway, what does he mean, God sent him? Why can't he do any miracles if God sent him? Well, I haven't forgotten he was nothing but a carpenter here in Nazareth. And his father before him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Shechem? Have you seen him do anything great for his own people? Well, I know they say he does great things, but I've never seen any proof of it. Jesus, we've got sick people right here in Nazareth. If you have so much power, why don't you cure some of them? Well, Please, my neighbors. Shh, quiet. Listen to me. I know you expect me to do great things for you because you're my people. But that's not always possible. Sometimes God has chosen a stranger to come in and do his work. What does he mean? Well, he's a carpenter from right he here. Talking about? You, who have known me all my life, should understand what I'm trying to do. You should believe in me. But instead, you make it harder for me than in any place I've gone. That's a fine thing to say to us. Do we have to listen to him anymore? Oh, I say, away with him. Yeah. Out of our synagogue. Right, out no, of the no, synagogue no, that's with not him. enough. If we drive him out today, he'll just come back tomorrow. That's right. We've got to do away with him. Do away with but him. What Get will we do him. with him, Obi? We'll uh, take him to the hill above the city. Yeah. Let's see what kind of miracle he'll have when we throw him over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, Jesus. Do you recognize this view? That's your hometown below us. I've been on this hill many times. Look way over there. There's your old house, see it? Yes, I see it. And there, there's your carpenter shop. You were a good carpenter, Jesus. Yes, but you weren't content to stay here, were you? You had to have more than what Nazareth could give you. Too bad for you, Jesus. Oh, that's enough talking, Ovid. Levi, let's get this over. Yes, well, right. all right, Shechem, if you're in such a hurry, you take over. Well, right. I didn't mean that, but, well, I... I just don't like the way is, things is, are being handled. Is, uh, uh, is there anyone else who doesn't like the way things are being handled? Uh, here's your chance. Well, what's the matter with all of you? Are you losing your nerve? Well, come on. Come on. He's walking away, old man. Uh, are you going to let him get away with this? Isn't anyone going to stop him? He's not afraid of any of us. We can't stop him. But, but, but we may never have a chance like this again. I can't explain it, Hobbit. But even though we were many, and he was alone, I still felt as if we were helpless against him. What kind of man is he? <laughs> Where are they? Where are those boys of mine? Good morning, Zebedee. Maybe they stopped to listen to Jesus. He's preaching right over the ridge there. Oh, but there are nets to mend and bolts to wash out. We all had a bad night on the lake. Uh. Maybe they thought they needed a few minutes off before they got back to work. Ah, and no fish again last night. Well, what can you expect from such half-hearted fishermen as all you have become? Now, Zebedee, that's not true. We love the sea. But you love to follow that Nazarene around and listen to him preach, too. Yes, I can't deny that. Hey, now look. Someone's stealing your boat while you stand around daydreaming. Hey, what are you doing? That's my boat. It's all right, Peter. It's only me. Jesus. I'm sorry, I couldn't tell. The crowd has gotten too big. I'd like to sit out on the water while I preach. May I use your boat? Of course. They'll be able to hear me better from a boat. Why don't you come with me, Peter? The people were moved by your words, Jesus. Thank you for asking me to come. Oh, but I'm afraid I took up some of your fishing time, Peter. Fishing time? <laughs> no time is fishing time lately. No fish? Nothing. Throw your net over the side here, Peter. We fished all night and came in with empty nets, Jesus. But if you say so. Ah. Oh, fish! Andrew! 
Andrew, come quickly. Fish! So many of my nets going to break. Fish? I don't understand. It's not possible. But wait, wait, I'm coming. Hurry, the boat's going to sink. Jesus, what's happening? Oh, I'm not worthy to have you show me such great power. I'm not worthy to even be with you. It's all right, Peter. From now on, I want you to be a fisher of men. Fisher of men? I don't understand, Jesus. Look, on the shore. James and John are waiting to see your catch. Come, let's go into them. I've never seen such a catch. So, here you are. I've been... I... Whose catch is this? It's mine, Zebedee. You? The half-hearted fisherman? No. It's Peter's catch, Zebedee. What do you know about fishing? I was with Peter when he caught these fish. Now I've asked him and Andrew to come with me to become fishers of men. Fishers of men? What kind of double talk is that? I want Peter and Andrew to leave their fishing and follow me. I want them to begin new work with me. Oh, that's fine. If they're so foolish, let them go. It'll just leave all the more fish in the sea for my sons. I want your sons to come with me, too. What? Jesus, we didn't know. We'll follow you. No. No, I forbid it. My sons are fishermen. I've taught them everything I know about the sea. But, Father, we've... Never! You're fishermen, and you belong on the sea. I'm sorry, Father, but we belong with Jesus. Your sons will still be fishermen, Zebedee. But the catch they go after will be more valuable than the fish of the sea. Wasting your time, Jesus. These people are sinners. Yes, Jesus, leave them alone. They are lost to God. No, no, you're wrong. Let me ask you. When you've lost something, you look for it until you find it, don't you? Well... What, like a silver coin or a sheep from your flock? Oh, get to the point, Jesus. You may understand after I have told you a story. Once there was a man who had two sons. One day, his younger son said to him, You're rich, aren't you, father? Well, we've done all right, my son. One day, when I die and you and your brother divide the property, you should have enough money to last for a lifetime. Could I have my money now, father? Now? Yes, while I'm young enough and strong enough to enjoy it. Stupid, don't you know you'll only waste it, father's hard-earned money? My son, if you want what's coming to you now, then you shall have it. So the younger son took his portion of his father's estate and went to live in another country. Mm, he's a rich one. It's not fair for one man to have so much money. No, it should be spread out to others. Like us? Mm -hmm. Let's see how much of a sucker he is. A man of taste. Look, friend, at the beautiful clothes this man buys. Mm, they do suit him well. Get it? Suit him? Mm, yes, quite. <laughs> do you like it? Oh, exceedingly. Well, thank you very much. How would you gentlemen like to join me for dinner? The dinner turned into a great party. And the great party turned into weeks and months of wild living until the younger son discovered that he didn't have one gold piece to his name. Please? Just alone? Me give money to you? When could you ever pay me back? You, a beggar. So the younger son began to look for a job. He found one, feeding pigs. <laughs> the pigs get better food than I. Oh, look. Here's something I can eat. My father's servants never go hungry. Oh, Father, how sorry I am that I was so selfish. If only you could forgive me or, or hire me. Yes, I could be a servant in my father's house. Weak with hunger and as ashamed as any son has been, the younger son returned home to be a servant in his father's house. 
But when the father saw his son coming... My son, my lost son has come home. Yes, father, I am lost. If you need another servant, I would gladly do anything. A servant? My beloved son, come. All those who are within, prepare a feast, for my lost son has returned. Your father wants you inside for the celebration. Never. I want no part of this. My son, are you here? Oh, please come. It's unfair. I've been here all these years. I've been good. But my brother hasn't done one good thing, and yet you give him a party. Son, you are always with me. And everything I have is yours. But your brother was dead to me. Now he is alive. Come now. We will celebrate. So you see, our Father in Heaven is also happy when a sinful man or child returns to Him. Not only is the sinner welcomed into our Father's house, but all of God's people celebrate His return. Excuse me, please. Could we get through? Excuse me. It's no use, Michael. We'll never be able to get close enough to speak to him. I knew it. I've made God so unhappy by the things I've done that now he has kept me from seeing the one man who could heal me. <laughs> Don't give up yet, Caleb. It was the power of Jesus to heal that drew such a big crowd today. It wasn't your sin. That's true. But Jesus won't stay overnight in Bethsaida, Michael. I heard someone say he's going home to Capernaum. There'll never be another chance for me to see him. That's where you're wrong, Caleb. If Jesus is going to Capernaum, then we'll go to Capernaum. And this time, I promise you, you will see Jesus. Quit shoving. I've been here since morning. Why should I step aside to let you get closer? Well, Michael, it's the same as in Bethsaida. We'll never get inside that house. Just follow me, Benjamin. I came prepared this time. Rope? What good will that be? That's only part of my plan. We'll be inside that house before you know it. Have you lost your senses? What are you talking about? You see those stairs on the side of the house? Well, they only lead to the roof. That's it. And today, we'll descend on Jesus like angels from heaven. Right through a hole in that roof of his. Come on, follow me. Look, there he is. There's Jesus right below us. Oh, no. No. I'm afraid to see him. He wouldn't want to see such a sinner. I was wrong to come here. No backing out now, Caleb. Not after we chopped a hole in his roof. Oh, but I... Quiet now, my friend. Our work's not done yet. Dan, Nicholas, fasten this rope to the four corners of Caleb's bed. And tightly. Are we going to lower him down? That's right, Benjamin. We'll place Caleb right at Jesus' feet. The things I've done today are only signs of God's pop. What's this? Coming through my ceiling? I... I... Please forgive us. We meant no harm. And you cause none. Come. Jesus, this is my friend Caleb. He says he's afraid to see you because he's done so many bad things in his life. But I say you'll help him. I... I do believe you have the power to heal Jesus. Caleb? Your sins are forgiven. Forgiven? Did you hear that? He speaks as if he is God. No man has the right to forgive sins. God alone can do that. It can't be possible. Can it? Why are you upset to hear me forgive his sins? Well, it's hard for us to believe that you... That you have this power. God has given me the power to forgive sins and heal. I have done this today so that you may see it and believe. Get up now, Caleb. Take your bed and go home. Uh. Oh. Michael, look, I am healed. Oh, Jesus, thank you. And I thank you, Jesus. So now he even forgives sin. Oh, I just don't understand. Don't you realize what he is saying? 
He's saying that he is God. Sir? Sir? What do I have to do to be one of God's children, sir? You should love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Love my neighbor? But I live in the country alone. I have no neighbor. Everyone is your neighbor. And you should be a good neighbor to all. You'll understand after I tell you a story. Once there was a merchant who was traveling along the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. As you know, that road is very dangerous since it is the hideout of bands of thieves and robbers. But the merchant wasn't thinking about that. He was thinking of all the things that he would buy at the marketplace. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, my, yes. Fine fragrances. And the ladies will love pretty jewelry. My store in Jerusalem will grow and prosper when I bring back all of these wonderful things. What a beautiful, beautiful day today. No, the merchant was not thinking of the danger. A plump little merchant, just for us. With a plump little money pouch, just for us. Quickly, grab him. Now. Uh, yeah, uh, got uh, him. Uh, uh, you got him? Uh, Hold him tight. Uh, oh, please, not my money, not my savings. <laughs> That's it. Take his cloak. I can use a fine cloak. Oh, oh, you're hurting me. Uh, and, and the sand. I'm Take got, it all. I've got That's it. it. Now, uh, away. Uh, the merchant ached so much that he could not move. He had to wait for some other traveler to come along and help him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He the first to pass by was a priest from the temple in Jerusalem. He thought himself a very religious man and was always praising God. Huh? Now, what's that? Oh, unfortunate man. Pretty rough road, this. I'd like to help, but must get to Jericho. Teach the people about God. Pretend not to see him. Pass by on the other side. That's it. Yes, good. I don't think he saw me. Then the merchant saw a Levite, one of the temple helpers, coming along the road. Oh, it's growing late. I can't walk any faster. Well, I've just got to make it to Jericho in time for the service. Oops. What's that over there? The merchant. Oh, and he's been hurt. I can't. I mustn't stop. Oh, someone's bound to come along. Uh, someone else will help him. I can't stop. And so the Levite passed by. He didn't help the wounded merchant. But he said that someone else would come along, and he was right. What's this? A Jew. Oh, but, but he's hurt. Gently. Oh, at last. Oh, thank you. I've waited. A Samaritan. An enemy from Samaria. Oh, no, no. Please, please don't kill me. And let me lie here. I'll die soon enough from my wounds. Oh, no, no, my Jewish friend. I do you no harm. But, but, but we're, we're enemies. Our people fight one another. As people always do, my brother. But is that reason for me to let you die? Come now. Let me help you onto my donkey. And so the Samaritan helped the Jew. He took him to an inn nearby, paid for his food and lodgings, and only then did he continue on his journey. And so I ask you, who was the good neighbor in the story? The one who helped the merchant. Then you go, my friend, and do the same. Well, 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 Reuben. Here comes the old hermit himself. I wonder whatever brought him out. And after all, Samuel, it is the Sabbath. Even a man as unfriendly as Jacob should come to the synagogue to pray. Oh, true. True. Then again, maybe he's heard that the Nazarene is going to be here today. The great healer. Oh, I doubt if even the Nazarene could heal that crippled hand. Uh, and besides, Jacob probably wouldn't be bold enough to show his hand to anyone, even if he thought it could be healed. 
Look how he hides it. And look where he sits, way in the back. What a fool. Look. The Nazarene. How can he resist when he sees Jacob's hand? To heal on the Sabbath? Would he do such a thing? Let's find out. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, could we speak to you, please? Yes, Samuel, what is it? Uh, Reuben and I were just having a little discussion uh, about healing. We know that you've done some wonderful things, marvelous things. Uh, but we were wondering what you think about healing on the Sabbath. Let me ask you something, Reuben. Suppose that you were a shepherd instead of a Pharisee. A shepherd? What's that got to do with it? What would you do if one of your sheep fell into a pit on the Sabbath? Shepherd? Sheep? I don't see what all this has to do with I question. believe you'd help get the sheep out of the pit, whether it was on the Sabbath or not. Well, yes, of course, if I were a shepherd. Isn't a man worth more than a sheep? Oh, so you say it isn't against the law to heal on the Sabbath. Jacob. What do you want? I haven't done anything. Come. Stretch out your hand. No, Jacob. The other hand. Mm. Stretch out the other hand. No. What are you trying to do? Embarrass me? Jacob, just do as I say. All right, Jesus, but please, I don't want anyone to see. My hand. You healed my hand. Am I dreaming? Well, are you satisfied, Samuel? He's done it. Uh, you see, Reuben, Samuel... You see my hand. Yes, we see it, Jacob. We see. It's never against the law to do good on the Sabbath. Quite a feat, Jesus. I'm certain people will talk of it for some time to come. Reuben, it's time we leave. Jacob's hand has been crippled for 50 years. Did it have to be healed on the Sabbath? Couldn't it have waited one more day? I don't understand the Nazarene. Doesn't he have any respect for the laws of Moses or the traditions of his own people? I don't know. I'm afraid he's going to cause a lot of trouble. Yes, but what can we do about it? We can do a very important thing. We can talk to King Herod about him. King Herod? He's the one with the power. He can put an end to this Jesus problem once and for all. What are you saying, Samuel? I'm saying that if I have my way, King Herod will order death for Jesus of Nazareth. Cut it out, Nathan. You're going to turn my boat over. It's the wind, Jason. Nothing can stop the wind. Oh, come on. If you don't watch it, you're going to send my boat out to sea. And then you'll really be in trouble. I'd wait out and get it for you. Oh, no, you wouldn't. You know what your father would say if you tried to wade in the Sea of Galilee. Do you really believe all those stories about how bad the Sea of Galilee is? Of course I do. You said yourself. Nothing can stop the wind. Yeah, but I was only kidding. I believe God could stop the wind. Well, why would he want to? Oh, lots of reasons. Remember how he parted the sea so Moses could get away from the Egyptians? Well, I don't think the Red Sea is as bad as the Sea of Galilee when it comes to storms, even if it is bigger. Nathan, there it goes. Why didn't you hang on to it? I wasn't blowing any wind on it now. He didn't have to. I think a real wind is coming up. Now what are you going to do? Me? You said you'd go get it. I'm not going out there. I didn't do it. What's all the excitement, boys? Jason wants me to rescue his boat, Jesus. The wind carried it away. Nathan said he'd wait out and get it. It would take more than waiting to get your boat now, Jason. I'm afraid it's gone. Ah, uh, it was my best boat. Well, I'll tell you what, boys. Peter and a few of us are going over to the other side for a while. How would you like to sail with us in a real boat? Do you mean it? Yes. It'll be good to rest a while. Away from the crowds? Oh, Jesus, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Your parents won't mind, will they? Oh, no, Jesus. Not when we're with you. Well, I'm going to lie down and see if I can sleep. You boys can help keep us on a straight course. All right? How about this, Nathan? 
Yeah, but my stomach is feeling kind of funny. You'd better not look over the side, Nathan. It's awfully rough out there. Is it a bad storm, Peter? Mm, I'm afraid so. Came up pretty fast. Are we almost to the other side? No, we've got a long way to go yet. Peter, you sound sort of scared yourself. No one likes a storm at sea, Nathan. Not even an old fisherman like me. Peter! I think we better take down the sail. I'm afraid this wind will tip us over. Did you hear that? I'm sick. I can't leave this oar. Someone else will have to help you. I've lost my direction. Can you see the shore? No, no, I can't. John, watch out that way. Boys, are you all right? I'm scared, Peter, and I I'm sick. What's going to happen to us? I don't know, boys. I don't know. John, can you hold us steady? No, it's no use. The wind's too strong. I have no control. Wait, Jesus. Ask him to help us. Master, Master, save us. We're all going to drown. Can Jesus help us, Peter? I don't know. I don't know if anything can help us. Master, don't you care if we all drown? Oh, Peter! John, have you so little faith? Master, it came up so suddenly. It's the worst storm I've ever seen. I command the sea to become peaceful. The wind to be still. What kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Didn't you know that Jesus had the power to save us? I guess I should have known. Oh, there's so much to learn about Jesus. I told you to carry my pack, boy, not to put it down. You ordered me to carry your pack one mile, and I've done as you ordered. Oh, I see. And you're not going to go one step further for a Roman soldier, is that it? That's it. All right, boy. Run along. But I warn you, you're headed straight for trouble with that attitude of yours. Amos, what's going on? Where's everyone going? With no time to talk, Stephen. We're going to hear the Nazarene, and he's already started. The Nazarene? I've heard about him. Is that him? Yes. Come on along. If anyone tries to take your shirt, give him your coat as well. Or if anyone forces you to go one mile with him, go two miles with him. Did you hear that? Why, I just came from being ordered to... Shh! You should give to anyone who begs from you and not refuse anyone who asks to borrow from you. Yes, but Amos... You'll never believe this. Just what he's talking about right now. I know what he's saying. I was coming down the road and this Ladies Roman... Ladies so Stephen. I want you to love your enemies. Pray for those who make trouble for you. And when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deserted. Not one person within sight. This is perfect, Master. Oh, I'm afraid you're wrong on both accounts, Andrew. It would feel good to rest a bit away from the crowds, but that wouldn't be perfect. And besides, look, where did they come from? Did they follow you here? I don't know, but let's go meet them. It's getting late, Master. We can't feed all these people. You've got to send them away. Oh, I don't think so, Andrew. We can give them something to eat. We? I have nothing. Even if there were some place to buy food, we don't have the money to buy. Well, then, I think we'd better see what we have right here. Why don't you walk among the people? See if they don't have some food. Excuse me, please. We're trying to get enough food to feed everyone. Do you have anything you could sell? I have nothing. You'll never get enough to feed this crowd. You might as well give up. How about you? Do you have anything you'd be willing to share with the others? Well, I... I have so little. It's just a small lunch my mother packed for me. I, I really don't think it would anything help. Anything would help. You should give to anyone who begs from you and not refuse anyone who asks to borrow from you. I... I guess it's really more than a small lunch. 
It's five buns, but only two fish. Well, uh, you may... You may have it. It's all I could get, Master. Five buns and two small fish. This will be fine, Andrew. But, Master, there must be 10,000 people here. This is food enough for birds, not for 10,000 people. Let's give thanks for the food first, Andrew. Then worry about the amount when it runs out. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who causes bread to come forth from the earth. Amen. Now, Andrew, let's eat. I'm hungry. But, Master, it'll never be enough to feed everyone. Well, look at that, Stephen. Every person has been fed, and still there are 12 baskets left over. And all from my lunch. Why, with just those leftovers, Jesus could feed the whole world. I've come to collect. How much do you have? It's all here. Take it. You're beginning to sound as if you don't like your work, Zakir. No, no, it's it's all right. Hmm. You used to be one of the finest tax collectors in the empire. You're slacking off. The people are poor. What? I said the people are poor. They can't afford taxes. You think Caesar cares about that? Well, neither should you. If it's guilt you're feeling, why not pray to your God for forgiveness? Now then, here's your share. And I want to see twice this amount next time I come. Pray for forgiveness. Oh, how I wish I could. But God could never forgive me. Hey, Zacchaeus, you better hide your money bags. The king is here. Caesar? No, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Jesus? Oh, no, he'd probably be angry to see me collecting taxes like this. I would like to see him. Maybe I could, quietly, so that no one would know. Zacchaeus! Hurry, come down from that tree. I must stay at your house today. My house? Oh, Jesus, you're, you're welcome. I'm coming. Lord, half of everything I own I will give to the poor. For truly, I took it from them in taxes. And to the ones I... I cheated. There were a few I cheated, Lord. I will give them four times the money I took. Zacchaeus, your sins are forgiven. Forgiven? Zacchaeus! Tax collector! Zacchaeus! We've got the house around us. You can't escape. Come out. Oh, dear. What's happening? Friends? I don't think so. There he is. Sinner. Traitor. Sinner. Jesus. But, but what are you doing with Zacchaeus? Yes, he's a sinner. Zacchaeus was a sinner, but he is sorry now, really sorry. And God has forgiven him. What? Forgiven him? How could God forgive him? Perhaps you'll understand if I tell you a story. Once there was a man who had two sons. One day he told his older son to go and work in the vineyard. But the older son had planned to go swimming with a friend that day. And he told his father that he would not work for him. Then the rich man asked his younger son to work in the vineyard. And he was very, very pleased when the younger son said right away that he would. But on his way to the vineyard, the younger son began to think about all the work that he would have to do there. He decided that he would rather lie down beneath a tree and sleep. As time went by, the older son began to feel sorry that he had not done what his father had asked him to do. So he left his friend, returned home, and told his father how sorry he was. Then, for the rest of the day, the older son worked in the vineyard. Tell me, which son did what his father wanted him to do? The older son. The one who worked. He didn't do it right away. But he did do it. And I tell you, Zacchaeus is now doing what God wants him to do. He has truly become one of God's children. I... I thank you, Jesus. It was for this purpose, Zacchaeus, that I came into the world. To save men, you and others like you. So that everyone might know 
the forgiving love of God. Jews, welcome to Jerusalem. Thank you, Laban, and a happy festival to you. Mm, I don't know how happy it's going to be this year. Not a happy Thanksgiving festival? Who ever heard of such a thing? Why, I've had a wonderful harvest. You know that's the reason for this festival, and I know it. But do they know it? I'm police. Uh -huh. I don't understand. You should understand better than most of us, Jude. They're getting ready for your brother. Jesus? <laughs> well, then. Tell them to go home to their families and celebrate with the rest of us. Jesus isn't coming to the feast. What are you talking about? Everyone comes to the Feast of the Tabernacles. That's what we tried to tell him, but he wouldn't listen to us. Just said something about the time not being right. What did he mean by that? It's beyond me. I don't understand him. Say, do you suppose those police would help me put up my tent? No, no, no. I tell you, Jesus is leading the people away from God. He's making fools of all of you. Oh, he's not. He's a good man. I believe everything he said this morning in the synagogue. Ah, this morning. You heard for yourself. He never had any formal training beyond what you and I have had. Who is he to be teaching us anything? He said his teaching was from God, and I believe him. Eli, Aaron, arguing during the festival? Well, I didn't travel all the way to Jerusalem to spend my festival time listening to that troublemaker. He's not a troublemaker. Calm down, both of you. There's nothing to get excited about. If it's Jesus you're talking about, he isn't coming to the feast. Apparently, you don't follow your own brother very closely, Jude. Jesus is here. What? That's right. He spoke in the synagogue this morning. Jesus here? Didn't he see all the police? Isn't he afraid of anything? I don't know. He came into the city quietly. But I'm afraid he's heading for trouble. Jesus says that he is the Messiah, the Savior that Isaiah promised us. Some of the people even think that we, the high priests, believe him. I have my best men ready to march on the synagogue, sir. Then march. There is a way to have everlasting life, by believing in me and in God my Father who sent me. The scriptures say that anyone who believes will have life forever. Did you hear that? I really believe he is the Messiah the prophets promised us. We didn't come here to listen to him. We came to arrest him. Arrest the Messiah? Don't let him fool you. He's a Galilean. Who ever heard of the Messiah coming from Galilee? Oh, but he speaks when as When our he... Messiah comes, my friend, he'll be royalty from the house of David, from Bethlehem, not Galilee. Now, we got a job to do. I won't arrest him. Nor I. I don't care what you say, I won't touch him. They what? They say they believe in him. I couldn't get them to take him, sir. It can't be possible. Even my own men. If I could only have a little more time, I'm certain that I could... Time! This is the last day of the feast. There is no more time. We made our plans. We brought in the men. Now the week is over and he's still free. But, sir, you can understand my position. I understand that where we fail with our armies, he triumphs with his own quiet way. What I don't understand is how we'll ever stop him. Is there anyone in this house who'll fix a chicken for tired travelers? But Jesus, hello. It's good to see you, Lazarus. Can you stay a while? Only long enough for our chicken dinner. We're just passing through from Jerusalem to Bethabara. But that's not long enough. Martha and Mary will have lots of news for you. We need longer to talk. I know, Lazarus, but it's not safe for me to be so near Jerusalem any longer. Oh, well, you know best. But if that's the case, we'd better get going on this chicken of yours. Master, Master, bad news for you. What is it, Thomas? Lazarus is very sick. And he's so far away from you now. Don't worry. Lazarus won't die. A good day for travel. Travel? Our friend Lazarus is dead, Thomas. But I don't understand. Only two days ago you said he wouldn't die. Now it's time to go to him.
Master. I didn't think you'd come. Didn't you know I would, Martha? Oh, but I... If you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Your brother will rise to life again. Yes. I know that he will live with you in heaven someday. Martha, I am the one who raises the dead to life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Do you believe that? Yes. Yes, but... I'd like to talk to Mary, too. Will you send her to me, Martha? Did you see that? What did Martha tell her? I don't know. But that's the first Mary's moved since we buried Lazarus. Oh, she must be going to his tomb. I think we should follow her. She needs our comfort. Oh, but she's taking the wrong road. And that's not the way to the tomb. Do you think she's overcome with grief? Should we stop her? No. No, not yet. Mary. He's dead, Master. He's dead. I know, Mary. Oh, but... Oh, but if... If you had been here... Show me where he's buried. We'll show you. Thank you. Do you see that? He must have loved Lazarus very much, too. Oh, but he's the one who healed a blind man only last week. I saw it myself. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Well, we'll never know. Lazarus is dead. Let Jesus show his love any way he can now. My friend. Move the stone away. Oh, Master, no. It's been four days since we buried him. Haven't I told you that if you believe in me, you'll see the glory of God? I think he's making a big mistake, but we'd better do as he says. <laughs> Father, I thank you for listening to my prayer. I know that you always hear me, and I speak to you now so that those around me might see your power and know that you have sent me. Lazarus, come out. What's he doing? Oh, it's not possible. I'm afraid to look. Lazarus! Cut the cloth from him and let him go. So this is how he chose to show his love and the power of God. Oh, look. Look, Peter, there's one. Oh, that flea-bitten old nag. Oh, I forgot. The master did say that the donkey should never have been ridden before. And I think that he must have meant that one. The pretty little girl over there. Oh, yes. Hey there. That's my donkey you're stealing. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. We were sent by our master. Oh, your master, eh? What are you, slaves to some bandits? Oh, no. Our master is Jesus of Nazareth. He... Oh, the one they call the Messiah? He wants my donkey? Oh, take her. Take her to Jesus with my humblest thanks that, that I should be so honored to serve him. That we will do, sir. <laughs> Come along now. Blossom of the desert, <laughs> a great man has need of you. Hosanna! Hosanna! Here he comes! I knew that we should have come to Jerusalem before this. Look how the people love him. That family was with us when Jesus brought Lazarus back to life. Yes, they've all come from everywhere for the Passover service in the temple. Oh, I feel so good I could sing. No. Look, it's Caiaphas, the temple priest. And I suppose he'll try to say that Jesus is breaking the law again by riding a donkey on Sunday. You must quiet these people, Nazarene. They call you a king. If I were to quiet them, Caiaphas, these very rocks would shout the glory of God. But they call you a king. Tell them you are not. Tell them. Because of you, priest, and others like you who have little faith, the people will soon find out about my kingship. The time has come. Hosanna, My father's house.
The temple is crowded with worshippers, Master. Worshippers? Businessmen, they come to worship money. What are you doing in my father's house? This house? This is a house of prayer, and yet you sit here and take money from the people. You make this holy place a den of thieves. What do you do, my God? And these birds! Do you turn the Lord's holy temple into a common marketplace? So, Jesus, you have come to the temple of Jerusalem at last. You who preach about God have now come to worship him. And have you come to hear me teach? Master, take care. They plot against you, Master. We mustn't stay. A good question, Caiaphas. That will trap him. You say, Nazarene, that there should not be money changers in the temple. Is money then sinful? It will not get you into the kingdom of heaven. A camel could get through the eye of a needle sooner than a rich man who cared only for his wealth could enter the kingdom of glory. Then what do you say about taxes, Jesus? Is it wrong for these people to pay tribute to Caesar, their king? A good question. This prophet, you know, claims to be a king over Caesar. Only Caesar is king here. Let me see one of those coins. Whose picture is this? That fellow doesn't even know Caesar when he sees him. <laughs> <laughs> then I say to you, give those things to Caesar which belong to Caesar. But give to God the things that belong to God. The prophet is clever. We shall have to be smarter the next time we seek to trap him. Next time. It had better be soon. Peter? This is really strange. Sometimes I just don't understand. Hmm? Uh, don't understand what, John? A few days ago, the master sent us for that donkey. He knew right where we'd find it. And he also knew that the owner would lend it to us. Yes. Well, here we are again, looking for a man with a water jug on his head. And we'll find him. How do you know? Well, you said it yourself. The master said we would. But how can he always be so sure? Look, John. There he is. Sir? Hmm? Sir, we've just come from our master, Jesus of Nazareth. We'd like to celebrate the Passover dinner in your house tonight. If... if you don't mind, sir. Mind? The master in my house? Not at all. Come. I have just the room. It's upstairs. Come now, Peter. You are tired and dusty from the road. It is only right that I refresh you. No, Master, you should not do this. I am your servant. Peter, the servant is no less than the Master. I do this so that you will have a part of me. Then wash all of me, my head, my heart. <laughs> no, no, this is enough. You are clean. And I say that you should all do this for one another, in love. You know that we love one another, Master. And you... And yet one of you this night will turn me over to those who hate me that I may be killed. No. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. No. Is it I, Lord? Is it I? No. No. It is the one who will take this bread from me. What you are about to do, do quickly. Where's Judas going? Just to get more food for the feast. Another lamb, perhaps, to slaughter. This is the bread of sorrow that our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let everyone who hungers or is in need come eat the Passover meal. Take, eat of this bread which I now pass among you, for this is my body. May the All-Merciful make us worthy of the life of the world to come. May he make peace for us and for all Israel. Drink the wine of this cup, for this is my blood that I will shed for you that your sins may be forgiven by God. As for me, I shall not eat or drink again until we meet in heaven. Blood, 
money. What would be a fitting price? What? That fellow out there, Annas, he's one of the followers of the Nazarene, and he'll take us to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a price? Mm -hmm. well, there's always one, isn't there? Well, Caiaphas, how about 30 pieces of silver? <laughs> <laughs> the price of a slave. Very good. Very good. But not much of a bargain for us, is it? How's that? Well, our slave will soon be rather dead, won't he? What a beautiful night, Master. Shall we sleep here, under the stars? No, John. Tonight is not a night for sleep. I ask that you three keep watch for me, while I go on yet a little further to pray. We will do anything you say, Lord, even die for you. No, Peter. For it is written in Scripture that all of you shall leave me tonight. But, Master... That I shall be alone with those who would kill me. We would never leave you, Master. No, Lord. Not I. Even you, Peter. The cock will not crow tonight before you have denied three times that you ever knew me. But, Lord... But keep watch. I must talk with my father. Oh, I'm sleepy. Such a big meal we had with the Master tonight. Oh, such wine... Father. Father. You can do anything. Please take this cup of death away from me. And yet, it is not for me to say, Father. It is your will. And I will obey Peter James John do you sleep while I could you watch for just a little while oh master forgive us we were full of food and wine master you are forgiven. Look. My betrayer is at hand. Roman soldiers. They're coming here. Is that... Judas? There are four men up there. How are we to know which is the Christ? Watch me. I will show you. Hail. Kiss me, Judas. All right, you. Come along. No, stop. You will not take him. You'll be sorry you did that, you Jesus lover. That's the slave of the high priest Caiaphas. Put your sword away, Peter. No man shall be harmed this night. But me. My ear. It was cut, badly cut. It doesn't even hurt now. The Nazarene has healed my ear. Why did you not arrest me in the temple? You were there. You've seen me before, and you. Why do you sneak up at night and take me as you would a common thief? Master, come. We will defend you. Yes, we will. Come. Come. Peter, do you not think that God, my father, could send whole armies of angels to save me? But it will not be so. I must suffer for you all. Let it be known that I go willingly. Then what are we waiting around for? No! No! Now, come with us, Nazarene. There are some important people back in the city who are most eager to see you. Pretty late at night, isn't it, Caiaphas, to be calling a meeting of the Sanhedrin? 
I, for one, were sound asleep. <laughs> Too much Passover wine, I'll wager. Yes, yes, it's late. But once you know the reason why I called you, you'll see how important this is. Bring in the prisoner. It's the one they call the Christ. The one who wants to be king of the Jews. Oh, even more than that. They say he is the son of God. <laughs> Which he is not. But, but why has he been arrested, Caiaphas? What are the charges? Blasphemy lies against the living God. Call the witnesses. I, uh, I, uh... You have something to say about the man who calls himself the Christ. <clears throat> he has said that he will destroy the temple. The temple? No. And what else? And he will rebuild it in three days. And yet another witness. He has said that he will destroy the temple made with hands and build another in three days. Without hands. You hear? Blasphemy. No one but the Lord God Almighty could build a temple in three days without hands. This man lies. Explain yourself, Jesus of Nazareth. Have you no defense? Answer the court, Jesus. In the name of the living God, are you the Christ, the Son of God? You have said so. Ah, and I say to you that you shall one day see the Son of Man coming to you on the clouds of heaven. Bless Liars! You have heard him. What is your Judgment. Death. 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 Take him to Pontius Pilate that the Roman government might have him punished. Yes, yes. Yes. Take him to Pilate. Take him to Pilate. It takes a warm fire on a night like this. Why is it so cold anyway? Who's that over there? Don't see anybody. Sure, it's a man. I bet he's cold, too. Uh, hey, man, come over to the fire. It's cold as death out there. Colder. Thank you. I am cold. Why do you look so strange? Don't you know where you are? This is the house of the high priest. I know. They took Jesus in there a while ago with a guard. Yes, yes. Say, uh, aren't you one of his followers? Me? No, no. I thought you looked familiar. I've seen you with him. No, no, I don't know who you're talking about. You're the one with the sword. I saw you too. You tried to kill my cousin tonight when he went with the others to arrest Jesus. You cut off his ear. No, you're all wrong. I said that I don't know him. I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this night, you will deny three times that you know me. No, no, Master. Master. Why do you disturb my rest? This man, this Jesus here, we found him stirring up the people, telling them that he's a king, the king of the Jews. And don't the Jews want a king? I thought that was what the whole nation was waiting for. We have no king but Caesar. Well, why don't you try him then? Your lawyers? Take him to your court. Pilate, you know that it is against our law to put a man to death. Death? Does he deserve so great a punishment? He claims to be a king. Oh, very well. Send him inside that I may question him. 
Hmm. You don't look like a king. Are you? I said, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. But your own people have handed you over to me. What have you done? I was not meant to be a king in this world, but in the world that is to come. If I were a king now, my servants would have fought to save me. So, you're alone, are you? I am alone. People of Judea! This man has committed no crime. He does not deserve to die. But he's scared of the people from Jerusalem to Galilee. They no longer follow Caesar, great Caesar. You say that he is a Galilean? Are you from Galilee? Herod is ruler of Galilee. He sleeps here in the city tonight. Take Jesus to Herod. They should have a sentence by now. Herod is sure to find Jesus guilty. Uh, quiet. Hmm? Who's out there? Uh, a spy? One of Jesus' followers? Oh, yes, but this one is an old friend. Judas, a friend indeed. No, I'm no friend, Caiaphas. What? Didn't you enjoy doing a good deed for a good price? Good deed? I turned Jesus over to you to be killed. Great deed. I'll never live it down. Take your money back. <clears throat> cold night. Oh, is this cold in Jerusalem? Only when you have no place to stay, like I do. Oh, so you're just here for Passover, too? Yes. And to have a look at this man called Jesus. Yeah. My wife, well, you know, she heard of him. And women get curious. Yeah. Well, will you look over there? What? Why, it's a man. He's hanged himself. Know him? Sure. This Jesus I was telling you about? This man's one of his followers. Name's Judas, I think. Yeah. Judas Iscariot. Well, I'll be. A man who was lucky enough to know Christ? Why in the world would he want to die? Maybe he just never knew how lucky he was. So, this is Jesus. I've uh, heard much of you, Jesus. It is said that you perform magic. You turn water into wine and make blind men see again. It's trickery, Herod. It's all part of his plan to fool the people. They believe that he's a king, the son of God, which he is not. Son of God, eh? Well, that would make you terribly important, wouldn't it, Jesus? More important than me. More important than Caesar, who is ruler of this nation. That's why Pilate sent him to you, Your Excellency. You must try him. Pontius Pilate sent Jesus to me? Yes. So, Pilate would have me do his dirty work for him, would he? <laughs> He's more clever than I thought. No. Send our king back to Pilate's. Here you are, little king. A royal robe for your journey back to Pilate. Now, take him away. I don't like it, Ernest. Neither do I. You said we'd get a swift sentence, Caiaphas. Do you call it swift to go to Pilate, then to Herod, then back to Pilate? This is the last time I promise that Jesus will soon be out of the way. Why do you come to me again? I told you once that I find no crime in this man, Jesus. No crime! But he claims to be a king! 
Anyone who claims to be a king sets himself against Caesar. Caesar is certain to hear of this, Pilate. Do you pardon a man who would overthrow our government? Yes, Pilate. Pilate, the law. Remember that a prisoner can be released on a holy day like today. Offer them Jesus. No, no, they'd never take oh, him. Oh, they would if you gave them a choice. We have many dangerous criminals, murderers and thieves. Barabbas. Oh, yes. Yes, the killer Barabbas. The people would never choose him. Listen to me, you people of Judea. It is your custom on holy days to pardon and release one of the condemned criminals. I offer you a choice. Jesus or Barabbas. Caiaphas, <laughs> they'll choose Jesus. No, they won't, not with our help. Barabbas, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. 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 Then what am I to do with Jesus? Crucify him! Crucify him! I've had enough of this. Guard, bring me a bowl of water. That's it. The others are picking it up. You see this, you people of Judea? I wash my hands of this affair. You do what you want with him. But as for me, I will not have my hands covered with this man's blood. His blood be upon us! And upon our children! Crucify him! Here he comes. Oh, no, no, I can't. It breaks my heart to remember how wonderful Jesus looked just a few days ago when he rode into Jerusalem, when the people were shouting Hosanna. And pushing against one another just to touch his robe. Oh, now they pull away. Even his disciples, even they've left him alone. Come on, Jesus. You too, you thieves. You're slowing down. It won't be long now. What are they going to do to Jesus? They're taking him up the hill with those two thieves. Why? To nail him on that cross. They want to kill him. Why doesn't he fight and run away? I don't think he wants to. I can't believe they're really going to kill Jesus. Why not? He deserves it. Oh? calls himself the king of the Jews. Nobody's king here but Caesar. He's not just a king. He's the son of God. <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. We haven't got all day. <laughs> now you've done it. <laughs> well... I guess you could use a little help. Ah, you there. Me? Who else? Come, carry this. I, I only came for the Passover. I'm not a part of this. Well, you're a part of it now. Get a move on. <laughs> Blessed. yourself, Jesus. Yes, you say you're the son of God. Prove it. Come down off the cross. Listen to her, Jesus. She's right. If you are the son of God, save yourself and us. What are you saying? Don't you fear God? We're guilty and deserve this torture. But Jesus has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. Truly, I say to you, we shall be together in paradise. Your turn, Julius. Come on, Julius. Throw the dice. The winner gets the robe, the fine robe of the king of the Jews. 
No. No. I don't want his robe. There's something strange going on here. Mary, don't look. Please, come away. My son. Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, into your hands I give up my spirit. It is finished. man was not guilty of any crime. He was a son of God. Pilate, what have you done? What now, Caiaphas? The followers of Jesus have taken his body to a tomb in the garden. I know. I gave them permission to do so. But what of his promise? On the third day, I will rise from the dead. You don't really believe that, do you, Annas? Of course he doesn't believe it. We're the ones who found Jesus guilty of lies against God, if you remember. It's his followers. What if they should steal the body from the tomb and then claim that he rose? The people would believe it, you know. They want to believe it, and if they do, Pilate, well, you're going to have a hard time governing them. All right, all right. I'll have a stone placed before the door of the tomb so that the dead won't get up and walk out. A heavy stone. You're strong as an ox, but how could you roll the stone away from the tomb? But we must anoint Jesus with burial oils. It would be wrong not to. We'll find someone to help us. <gasps> Magdalene, look. We won't need any help. How come? No, oh, don't go in. It's a trick. He's gone. <laughs> the stone is so big. How did they move it? Come, Mary. We must tell Peter and the others. No. It was no dream, Peter. Mary saw it, too. The stone was rolled away. And the body of Jesus was gone. Peter, what are you waiting for? Run! Yes. Yes, John. It is true. Go on in. No. You. John, the body is gone. Only the linen clothes are there. Grave robbers? Do you think that Jesus was stolen? I don't know. Come, let us tell the others. Aren't you coming with us, Magdalene? No. No, I want to stay here a moment and think. (laughs) Woman, why are you weeping? Because someone has taken away the body of my Lord, and, and I don't know where they have laid him. Who is it that you are looking for? Sir, if you have carried him away, please tell me where you have laid him. Mary Magdalene. Jesus. My Lord. Magdalene, go to my disciples, my brothers, and tell them that I have risen from the dead. Tell them that I will soon be leaving you. Yes, Lord. I will tell them. Peter, John, wait, please. Good news. I have seen the Lord. He lives. The Lord lives.
The body is gone. What? Yeah. Jesus, the one we nailed to the cross, his body is gone. The grave is empty. He, he's risen. Risen? You fool. Did you see this happen, soldier? No, sir, but this is what everyone is saying, sir. That Jesus rose from the dead? Yes, sir. Well, we say that his body was stolen. And you will say that his body was stolen, soldier. But his followers, people believe them. No matter. When you tell them that his body was stolen, they will believe you. Not one fish. Since Jesus died, nothing's gone right. John, do you believe that Jesus is still alive? That he walked out of his grave? After being nailed to a cross? Not me. If I could see him and touch the holes where the nails went through his hands, then I'd believe it. Till then, no. Oh, Thomas. Doubting Thomas. You find it hard to believe anything till you see it, don't you? And who are you to talk, Peter? When Jesus was arrested, you told people that you didn't even know who he was after following him for two whole years. I know I did. You don't have to tell me. Three times I denied him. And a thousand times since, I've wished that I could go to him and beg him to forgive me. Oh, Peter. Don't scare the fish. Fisherman! Have you any fish? Not yet. There are no fish in the sea today. Cast your net on the other side of the boat. He doesn't look like a fisherman, but maybe... Well, why not? Fish! Look at them all! I am, I am! Peter, look at the great catch we're making. It is. That fisherman on the shore is Jesus! Master, it's me, Peter. I'm coming, Master! Oh, Master, you are alive. Forgive me. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then feed my lambs, care for my people. Peter, do you love me more than the others? Yes, Lord, you know that too. Then tend my sheep, care for my people. Peter, do you love me? Oh, Master. Three times you ask, and three times I say that I love you. Yes, Peter. Feed my lambs. Care for my people. It is the master. Do you not have faith that I live, Thomas? See my hands? Am I a spirit? My Lord and my God. Because you have seen me, Thomas, you believe that I came back from the dead. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe. Master, the high priest has been telling everyone that we stole you from the grave. Don't be afraid. Soon I will send my spirit to be with you, to fill you with power that you have never felt before. When the spirit comes, you will say to all the people on the earth that you have seen the Son of God. The soldiers are after us, Lord. Even now, we hide from them. We remember that on the wonderful day when you came back from the dead, you told us not to be afraid, that your Holy Spirit would come to us and give us strength. But Lord, it's been 40 days since you died, and we're still afraid. Listen. What's that? What? Did you hear it? Sounds like hoofbeats. Are Roman soldiers? Yes. The Legion. Peter. Peter, it's no use to pray. They know where we're hiding. No. Brothers, be quiet. Please. It can't be soldiers. So this is what you meant, Lord, when you said that the Holy Spirit would come. Oh, Lord, I feel filled up with your strength from head to toe. Filled to overflowing, Lord. Who will 
come with me to preach the word of God. I will, Peter. And I... I am not scared anymore either, Peter. Not of Roman soldiers or the high priest Caiaphas or anyone. John, brothers, come. We have work to do. So, the followers of Jesus are preaching again. I thought we had them scared into silence. No, Caiaphas. They do not scare easily, it would seem. Well, look on the brighter side. Now that they have come out of hiding, it won't be difficult to find them. We can wait. Oh, Peter, how wonderful it is not to be afraid anymore to even go to the temple in broad daylight. Money. Money for a poor man who cannot walk or work to earn a living. You can't walk? No, sir, I can't. Look at us. Money? Good sir, you have money to give? No, I have no silver or gold. But I will give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. No. What? What are you trying to do to me? Walk? But I was born lame. You will help me walk? No, I uh, can't make you walk. Uh, but Jesus Christ, in whose name I speak, can. Now walk. I can do it. Look at me, everyone. I'm healed. Why, it's true. It's a miracle. Praise God for his loving miracle. Believe in this. You have seen it happen before your eyes. Believe, too, that Jesus, who was murdered on the cross, rose from the dead and went to the kingdom of heaven. For with our eyes, we saw that happen. Look out, soldiers. That's all for today, preachers. No more miracles. You're under arrest. The high priest Caiaphas wants to see you. So, that is all you can say, is it? Just more lies about a dead man who lives? A holy spirit that moves you to speak? How sorry I am that you will not let yourself believe it, Caiaphas. Uh, Caiaphas, after that miracle today, it would cause a riot if we laid a hand on these men now. Mm, yes. Well, let this be a warning to you, Peter, and to the others who preach with you. We don't ever want to see you preaching again. If you don't want to see us, Caiaphas, don't come looking for us. For preach we will, wherever and whenever we can. By the grace of God, Caiaphas, until the day we die. Alice, we've been kind to these people, these Jesus lovers, long enough. The worst is a new one named Stephen. He's dangerous. In our position as priests, Caiaphas, we could bring him to trial. Ah, they should all be done away with for good. Oh, no, we wouldn't dare. But perhaps someone could be found who would handle this as a special assignment. Masters, there's someone outside to see you. Later, we're busy. Yes, sir, but he says it's important. Name is Saul of Tarsus, sir. Saul? Send him in. Yes, Saul. A friend of our cause. Already he's killed many of the followers of Jesus. A few more wouldn't be too much trouble, would they? Well, no trouble at all. For us. Peace be upon you. Saul of Tarsus, come in. We have a little job for you to do. They accuse you, Stephen, of preaching against the temple, telling the people that the criminal Jesus was the son of God. You stiff-necked people. You are the ones who betrayed him. Yes, you are the ones who murdered the Son of God. You men know what to do, don't you? Yes. There's only one way to deal with these preachers. Come along, preachers, Stephen. That trip to the outskirts of town will be good for your health. I hope you know how to duck, Stephen, how to jump away from flying rocks. They sure could be bad for your health. Do not hold this sin against them, Lord Jesus. I'm coming to be with you. Well, you were right about Saul. From now on, we'll put him in charge of getting rid of all the Jesus preachers throughout the land. Nothing's going to stop him.
Never seen anything like it. In all my marches with Caesar, we never went this pace. He can't wait to reach Damascus so he can arrest a few more of those followers of Jesus. Uh, just look at that face. Not one sorry feeling in his whole body. Saul. Saul. Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise, enter the city. You will be told more later. What's the matter, sir? You didn't see it? What, sir? The light, the voice. No, sir, we saw nothing. My eyes, I'm blind. Come along, sir. We're nearing Damascus. We'll lead you there. Yes, Damascus. I'm to enter the city and be told more later. <laughs> oh, Lord, how much later? Come in. Who is it? Please, I, I can't see you. Who is it? Saul, my name is Ananias. I live here in Damascus, and I'm one of the followers of the Nazarene. You sound frightened, Ananias. Don't be. Even though I came here to kill you and the other followers, you can tell that I can't now. I'm blind. That's why I'm here. The Holy Spirit in a vision sent me. You had a vision too? Yes. Open your eyes, Saul. I can see again. Ananias, don't you hear me? I tell you, I can see again. Don't tell me, Saul. Go out and tell the others. For God has chosen you to preach for him. Chosen me? After what I did to him? Ananias, I'll tell the world. Don't you understand? They think you want to kill them. Barnabas, believe me, I'm not here to hurt anyone. I just want to meet Peter and the other disciples of Jesus. Please. But you killed Stephen. And you were sent to Damascus to kill the other followers. What happened? I became a follower of Jesus myself. You? Yes, me. Even me. All right, Saul. I want to hear about it. From the beginning now. Tell me the story of Damascus. I did go to Damascus to kill. But on the road, the Holy Spirit came to me and everything changed. I saw how wrong I'd been about Jesus and I wanted to tell the world how good I felt now to believe in him. So I preached in the temple, everywhere. Until one day, someone recognized me. Listen to me. I have something very important to tell you. The Holy Spirit is with me, and I have seen the Lord. Amen, preacher. And we've seen you, too. Well, welcome, brother. It's good to know that those who have heard these words come back to listen to me again. Oh, I didn't see you here, preacher. No, it was at the trial of Stephen. He was a man of God, too. Remember him? You ought to. You held the coats while they stoned him to death. You're no preacher, Saul of Tarsus. You're a preacher killer. Can you deny it, preacher? No, I can't. My name was Saul. But I've been baptized with a new name to show everyone that I'm different now. Oh, and what's the new name? Paul. What? You're the apostle Paul? Why, I've heard wonderful things about you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, they say. Hogwash, I say. He's a dirty killer! Apostle Paul is the killer soul! No, no, brothers, please believe me. Paul, I do believe you, but come, you must get out of here quickly before they kill you. If only I could escape this city and get to Jerusalem to meet Peter and the others. If the ones who knew Jesus could believe that I've changed, who would ever doubt me again? We'll try it, Paul, we'll try. No, not yet the guard. Truly, brother, I'm too big for this. It's going to break. <laughs> have you no faith, Paul? Of course I have faith in God, but not much faith in this basket. Up, head down. Good. Cover secure. Now hang on, Paul, and God be with you. Who goes there? 
Hello? Anybody there? Having trouble out there, soldier? Thought I heard someone approach, sir. Someone from outside the gate coming into the city? Yes, sir. Then don't worry about it. The man we want's on the inside, trying to get out. Oh, yeah. So, whatever it was, it couldn't have been Paul. Right, sir? Right, soldier. So, here I am, Barnabas. No longer Killer Saul, but Apostle Paul, as long as I live. Will you take me to Peter now? It's all right, Barnabas. We heard it all. And here are some of the apostles you wanted so badly to meet, Paul. This is John, and here is his brother, James. Peace be with you all. And Peter? I am he. Welcome back to Jerusalem, Paul, and to the fellowship of Christ our Lord. Yes, I did it myself. They're all bolted tight. Yes? And no soldiers in the street below? No, no soldiers. What's happened, John? Oh, yes, John, I've never seen you look so pale. What is it? Can't you tell us? Yes. I have to tell you. Once more, Herod has struck the heart of the church. My own brother James has been... Killed. Yes. No, it can't be. But that's not all. Hasn't anyone begun to wonder where Peter is? Not Peter, too. Oh, I thought he was out preaching. Peter dead, too? No. Not dead yet. Herod's letting him spend the night in prison, in chains. After Passover, he'll take Peter before the people. And you know what that means. That's just what happened to Jesus. After Passover, the people had to decide what to do with the prisoners. And, and they killed Jesus. John... You're our leader now. Oh, tell us what to do. Pray. Pray now as you have never prayed before. Believe and have faith, brothers. That's all we can do. Pray. And I pray for my brothers in the church, Lord, that their voices may always be heard by you. Peter, get up. Quickly. What? Did someone speak to me? Hmm, I thought I heard. Dress yourself, Peter. Put on your sandals. Lord? Am I dreaming? Come along, Peter. Wrap your cloak around you. Follow me. Escape? But how? The doors, and there are quite a few of them, believe me, are locked shut. Are you still there? I said, how will we get through all those doors? Follow me, Peter. Yes, yes, but I still don't understand. I'm out, free. It wasn't a dream. Dear Lord, was that an angel? Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Surely it is not your will that the greatest among us, Peter, be taken away. Listen to our words, O oh Lord, and answer them. Rhoda, see who's at the door. Who's there? Rhoda, it's me, Peter. But it can't be. Peter? Yes. Open the door. John, Andrew, it's Peter at the door. Peter! You're crazy, Rhoda. Your worry about Peter has made you hear things. You didn't open the door? I was so excited, I forgot. I'll do it now. Careful. Who is it? Shh! No noise. They'll be looking for me. But how did you get out? What did you do? Nothing. I was just praying. Praying for you, as a matter of fact that the Lord would grant your prayers when my chains fell away from me and something told me to escape. You ask that our prayers be granted? Yes, every one of them. And at that moment, we were praying for you, that you might be set free. Brothers, our darkest hour is now one of our greatest. 
Come, let us pray again. This time to thank the Lord for the blessing he has given us this day. How can we believe you? You're a stranger in our country. We don't understand you. I've never heard of the man Jesus. If he came back to life from the dead, why hasn't anyone ever told us? Brothers, men of Lystra, that's what I'm telling you now. This man Jesus was the son of God. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me tell you what he did. He performed miracles. He made the lame to walk again. Who made the lame walk? Jesus did, brother. May I see him? I want him to make me walk again. Do you believe that if you saw Jesus, he could make you walk again? You just said so, didn't you? I believe you, sir. Wonderful things happen to those who believe. Stand up and walk. I... I can. Look at me. I can't walk. Jesus? Are you Jesus? No, I am not Jesus. But through me, Jesus has done this for you. I've seen enough. So have I. Come on, everyone. We know what we must do. Paul, you preached well. But Barnabas, the people, where have they gone? I think that we'd better get out of here too, Paul. Remember what happened in Iconium when they tried to stone us to death? Yes, I well remember. Come. Paul, what about... He doesn't seem to want to leave you. You'd uh, better go home, brother. You're not safe with us. But you healed me. I am safe with you forever, Master. No, you don't understand. The others will be back soon. Oh, no. It'll be a long time before they return. Uh, uh, very well, but when they do, you'd better be at home or they'll kill you too. Kill? Yes, when they come to kill us. Oh, no, no, you're joking, Master. You said yourself that a god does not die? No, no, they go to lay sacrifices on your shrine. What? To worship you, Master, to honor you. They believe as you asked, and they've gone to the temple to honor you. They think I'm God? Well, aren't you? Great Zeus, mighty Hermes, 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 Stop! So don't worship me. Worship Jesus, as I told you. Worship Christ. You told us to believe you. Now you tell us that you lied. Traitor! Blasphemer! It's no use, Barnabas. Why won't they listen? Hurry, Paul. We've learned one thing on our travels anyway. Well, what's that? We've learned how to run. Come on! Slow down, Barnabas. We should be safe. Just a little farther, Paul. A stone can travel faster than we can. Oh. Paul! See, Master? I can't even run with you. Master? Is he dead? Dead? How could he die? Don't you believe in him either? Paul! Paul! Oh. Oh. Barnabas? Oh, they're, they're still after us. No, they've turned back. I guess they thought they killed you. Oh, I knew they couldn't kill you, Master. Didn't I? Oh, no. I've failed here, failed horribly, Barnabas. Well, there's one good thing. What? He can walk again. Yes, God was good to him. And I can talk again, wherever the Holy Spirit sends us. You won't come here again. Oh, yes, Barnabas. I won't give up on them. There are some who believe in Jesus, and many more who will someday. I'll be back. I'll be back. These men are servants of the Most High God. They will show you the way to salvation. Who oh, listen to the servants of God, and you will be saved. Don't look now, Paul, but there she is again, the crazy woman. No, Silas, she's not crazy, but she is filled with an evil spirit. We only just arrived here in Philippi. She's never met us, and yet she knows that we came here to preach, that we are servants of Christ. You mean like a fortune teller? She can tell the future? In a way, an evil way. She's a slave belonging to a group of merchants who make money by selling the fortunes she tells. Why does she tell them, then? She can't help herself. But through the powers of Jesus, I can. Woman! Servant of God! Woman, you are filled with an evil spirit. Evil spirit, 
I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. In the name of Jesus, come out. Paul, look out. Her owners. What have you done to our slave? Is she dead? Dead? No, she's going to begin living her own life. I don't know what he means, but he's right. She's breathing. Mm, but can she still tell fortunes? Test her. Fortune teller, can you hear me? Come, woman, prophesy. Who is this man? Him? I don't know. I, I never met him. Is he a servant of God? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I told you I've never met him before. How am I to know? Use your special powers, woman. Powers? I don't have any powers. She's not just dazed. We're lost. No more can we sell the information she gives. You ruined us. Why did you do it? I've come to your country to preach to the people, to save them from evil. Well, let's see if you can save yourself, preacher. Grab him. No! Take your hands off him. Oh, you want to join in the fun. Well, there's room enough in our prison here for both of you. Move along. Well, Paul, we can't very well go to the people now, can we? I guess that this is the end of it. Or the beginning. Paul, what's this? I, I don't know. The ground is shifting. Look out, the ceiling. You all right? I, I think so. And, and you? Fine. I. Paul, look. My chains fell off. Mine too. The door. It came open. Oh, Paul, now you can go to the people. No, no, Silas, wait a moment. I think someone's coming to us. Footsteps down the hallway there. If the two preachers are gone, I'll be tortured for sure. I hear that they preach of hope, but there's no hope for me now. Oh, no. No. The doors are open. They're gone. Ooh, I don't want to be tortured. Better to end it all now. No, stop. We haven't escaped. No? As long as the spirit of Jesus is with us, we have no need to escape from anything. Oh, please. You must then tell me of this wonderful spirit of Jesus. Ever since I heard of the good thing you did for the slave girl, I wanted to talk to you, but I've been afraid. No need to be afraid, my friend. There are others, too. My whole family wants to hear you preach. Your whole family? Yes, and others, many others. Silas, I'm certain that this was God's plan, the beginning of the church in Philippi. As soon as we're set free, there will be much work to do. Then you will come to us and say a few words about Jesus. A few words? Brother, you have no idea. You'll never hear the end of it. Don't go, Paul. We'll send someone else. Our Lord Jesus went to Jerusalem, Philip. Yes, Paul, and died there. But he left behind many followers. Who are now being imprisoned by the Romans. But who need money to stay alive. It's for this I go. You know that. The followers need me there. But if the Romans catch you... Philip, I am ready not only to be put in prison, but even to die for the name of Jesus. <laughs> Joe, dear nephew, how did you... Shh! I slipped in past the guard. I only have a moment. You see, I live with some of the followers of Jesus here in a hideout in Jerusalem. We were all so happy when we heard that you had come, Paul. But a whole week went by and we didn't see you. What happened? Well, some of the priests here don't understand what Jesus did, Job. They think that it's against the law to tell people, even those who aren't Jews, about God. But Jesus came to bring all people together, to love one another, under one God. I wonder if it'll ever come to be. They certainly don't love you, Paul. I'm beginning to get that idea. Job, do something for me. See if my being in chains satisfies them or if they want more. Who? The priests? Yes. And anything you hear, tell to Lysias, captain of the guard. A Roman soldier? But Paul... Don't worry, he's no fool. He'll be grateful to you for sparing him the mess of having a dead preacher on his hands. Dead preacher? You? Yes. Now hurry. Go spy on the priests. 
I thought when we killed Jesus, we killed the whole movement. It doesn't look as if it'll ever stop. No, this Paul is a great leader among Jesus' followers here. Clever the way the Romans arrested him, with our help. That ought to clear things up. The followers will come out of hiding, give up their belief in Jesus, and we will welcome them back into the fold. No. I think that Paul should be killed, too. What? Might be the only way. Once and for all. A way to be finished with this for good. Forever. Well, I suppose that it's for a good cause. But this has got to be the end of it. It will be. For Paul, I hereby swear that I shall not eat or drink until the prisoner Paul is dead. By my oath, I swear the same. And I. And I. Is this true? Yes, sir. I heard it all. They will ask you to have Paul brought before a jury, and on the way there, they'll kill him. Oh, save him, please. Go now. Tell no one what you've told me. You will save him. Go. He wouldn't answer me, Paul. It's all right, Job. You were very brave today. But it's night already. Nothing's been done to free you. And what if they come now to take you to the jury? They'll kill you. I know they will. Only God knows what'll happen, Job. And it looks as if we're going to find out. Come along with us, preacher. You stay back, boy. You'll only get in the way. In the way of what? Murder? Where are you taking him? Awfully curious, aren't you? All right, you can come, but keep your mouth shut. Whatever happens, tell the followers of Jesus always to be faithful. Even though the priests have the Roman guards arrest and kill those who believe? Yes. Because when you have faith, it's like opening a door to freedom, no matter what happens. <laughs> Hurry up now. We're to take you out of Jerusalem, to the governor in Caesarea. The Captain Lysias wants you to live. The door to freedom. You understand now, Job? Yes, I do understand. Come on, preacher. It's a long, rough road we have to travel. It always is, my friend, but a joyful one. Goodbye, Job. Peace be with you. And with you, Paul. And with you. So, this is the man, Paul, who has caused such a stir among the people? Governor Festus, we appeal to you to have this man put to death. Yes, yes death. Uh, oh, but why? Is one of your own people? Surely you wouldn't want death for one of your own? We don't want any part of him. He preaches against our faith. He tells foreigners that the man Jesus was the son of God. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. He's a quiet man too, isn't he? For being such a great preacher, a great talker, he certainly is silent. Have I permission to defend myself? <laughs> Naturally. This is a... A kind court. We would hear all sides of this interesting story. I do believe in Jesus, the Son of God, who rose from the dead and lives. And I tell you that he came to bring all men, Jew and foreigner, closer to God, one God. I do not break Jewish laws or any Roman laws in preaching. Furthermore, I have sat in prison here for two years. Surely I've been punished long enough for this crime, this crime which I didn't commit. That's right. You have been here a while, haven't you? He should have been tried in Jerusalem. But he escaped. Would you like to go back to Jerusalem to stand trial legally before the Jews? No, no, I'm not a fool, Festus. I know what that would mean. Death, like Jesus. No, I'm a Roman as well as a Jew. And as a Roman citizen, I demand to go to Caesar. Caesar? But we have no way of persuading great Caesar to our cause. Of course not. That was Paul's plan. Festus, hear us. The prisoner has no right. You must not allow this. My loyalty is first to Caesar. You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. And you, gentlemen, you might as well go home. Agrippa, Bernice, I heard that you had come. Welcome to my palace. Oh, it's quite a palace, Festus. You did well to get this appointment from Caesar. Caesar made you a king, didn't he? The governorship was the least he could do for me. I hear that you had a trial today, Festus. Was it exciting? Oh, just a few priests having an argument with a man named Paul, a preacher. It's about that man, Jesus. Remember him? Hmm. Mm. The priests say that Jesus is dead. 
And Paul says that he's alive. And is Paul still here? Yes. Says he wants to go to Rome to be tried by Caesar. I'd like to hear the man myself. Oh, that would be entertaining. All right. Tomorrow, then, you shall hear him. Uh, Jesus isn't dead? Hmm, I thought he was dead. He was nailed to a cross and buried in a tomb, but he rose from the dead, came back to life. How do you know? I saw him myself on the road to Damascus. Did he say anything to you? He told me to go into the city and to tell others about him. And did you? Yes, I went everywhere, to countries far from here. You told foreigners? Of course. God isn't just Lord of us. He's for all people, all nations. Paul, oh, you're crazy. No, I'm not, Festus. King Agrippa knows that. He believes in the prophets. Soon you will have me believe in Jesus. Why not? I wish all the world could be like me, except for these chains. Festus, be careful what you do with this man. He doesn't deserve to die. Maybe not. But he appealed to Caesar. Caesar shall try him. If only he hadn't. What? We could have set him free. Hmm. I wonder what will happen to him now. I'm afraid, my dear, that that is something we will never know. No, we can't set sail now. What do you know about sailing? Yeah. Get below with the other prisoners where you belong. But it's almost winter. There'll be storms at sea. Can't you feel that breeze? That's a south wind, mister. A sailing wind. Ah, what does he care? He only wants to stay on land so he can escape. Uh, not so easy to run away in the middle of the ocean, is it? But we'll keep an eye on you, just in case you try it. <laughs> Patience, Paul. Patience, when we're all sailing to our deaths? Oh, Luke, I'm sorry. I'm not angry with you. I know. I shouldn't have let you come along in the first place, seeing that even if we get to Rome, Caesar may sentence me to death. For the crime of believing in Jesus and telling people about him. It's a sad time we live in. Not to me. Not sad, joyful. For I know Jesus. I've seen him. That's enough. It may have to be enough. Here we go. She won't turn! Then lighten the load! Order all men to throw the cargo overboard! Yes, sir! What direction are we headed in? Don't know, sir! Can't even see the stars! Men! I know that we're headed for safety! The Holy Spirit is with us and won't let us die! Now, how soon does your Holy Spirit think that this will be over? I don't know! Have faith! Faith. Prisoner Paul said, have faith. Well, I've had 14 days of faith and I've run out. We've got to do something. Yeah. Well, the storm died down. But where are we? Drifting in the middle of nowhere. Ben, I know how tired you are and sick from lack of food. Let us eat now and praise the Lord for bringing us this far in safety. Dear Lord, Land we praise your name. Land ho! Land ho! Where, 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 where. Dear Lord, we thank you for delivering us from the sea and bringing us to land. Hey, how'd you get off the boat? I bet you think you're going to escape now, don't you? No, I... Oh. Ah, now you'll get what you deserve, preacher. Oh, let me see that. I'm all right, Luke. But that snake was poisoned. Oh, let him alone. He'll die all right. Yeah. What do you think you are, some kind of a doctor? Yes. Oh. Truly, Luke, it doesn't even hurt. Hmm. No swelling. Not yet. But that's fast poison. He should have been dead by now. Don't you even feel a little sick? Not at all. I feel wonderful. The Lord is with us. Hey. Maybe you ought to tell us about the Lord. About Jesus. Brothers, I thought you'd never ask. Draw close to the fire. I'll tell you all about him. That's the most wonderful story I've ever heard. I do believe in Jesus. And so do I, Paul. How sad he must be about the way we've treated you. We're sorry... Sorry, that... I'm not. The past is over, and you believe. I'm filled with joy. But the captain says we'll set sail again soon. For Rome and your trial. 
Why don't you run and hide? The ship will leave without you. No, I can do anything, suffer anything in the name of Jesus. Oh, Paul, won't you fight back? I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. And may you find your reward, Paul. Not just me, Luke. May all who have loved Jesus be rewarded in his kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.